to be vlogging again. I know last week you saw me post a video, but it was like at the beginning of me feeling like myself after this cold that never ended. Now I'm feeling much more like myself and back into the swing of things. Very thankful. I feel like whenever you are sick is when, or at least for me, when I get really appreciative for my health. And this week I stepped up my working out. I've been really paying attention to the food that I'm eating, just making sure I'm giving all my body the tools it needs to be a-okay because it is not fun not feeling good so anyways i was just about to say what a beautiful sunny day it is in the city and this is this is what happened i went out for a nice walk got some fresh air i ended up making a voyage to nordstrom rack as well because if you haven't heard the news nordstrom is closing all of their locations in canada which i think there's only like 15 locations i could be wrong but there's not many and me personally i'm not a huge shopper at Nordstrom, like the official Nordstrom locations, but there is a Nordstrom Rack location that I really like heading to in the city. And I'm a little disappointed because it's kind of like a winner's home sense vibe. It's a great place to go get shoes or bags or sunglasses or accessories. I don't know, it's just a really fun place to peruse. And now it's leaving me. And that's another US retailer that just has vanished from Canada. It really made the feelings of when Target left Canada kind of come back. Anyways, I went to Nordstrom Rack just to see if there was anything interesting on sale or just to see it before I feel like it gets totally picked over and honestly eh, there wasn't that much there there wasn't really anything I didn't see anything that tickled my fancy a tad disappointing but also everything on sale was like 10% off so it's not like I missed out on any crazy deals I did pick up something from the PO box though a package from CeraVe CeraVe released four new products I love using the night cream and the AM cream is good too, it has SPF in it. But the one that I, I go back to time and time again is that night cream. They have an acne control gel, 2% salicylic acid acne treatment. It helps clear acne pimples. This is great because I have a pimple forming right here and here. When I was having my cold situation, for the first time in years, I wasn't doing my skincare routine properly. And I found out that actually my skincare routine does do something because my skin has just been really upset about the fact that I stopped doing the things to it. So I almost need to like treat it extra special right now to make up for it. I feel like I'm apologizing for for being a bad skin owner. Okay, so uh, yeah, we'll see if the acne control gel helps me out. There's also the skin renewing nightly exfoliating treatment. Is this a chemical exfoliant? Because it seems like you don't wash this off. I don't, I don't get it. I'm gonna have to look into that more. They also now have hydrating, makeup removing, plant-based wipes. And last but not least is a comforting eye makeup remover. This is very small. It's meant to effortlessly remove stubborn makeup, including long-lasting and waterproof eye makeup. Interesting. It contains three essential ceramides and hyaluronic acid to help maintain the skin's natural moisture barrier and retain hydration. So a big thank you to CeraVe for sending these to me. Like I said, I've been treating my skin like sh so maybe this will help make up for it. I also did an Abercrombie order, but I think I'm gonna try and shift you to the vertical camera because it's very hard to show you a full outfit horizontally. Stay tuned for that. This order contains some of my first spring summer pieces and I am paying a lot of attention this spring summer to making sure I'm getting things that I need and also thinking in advance to a destination wedding that I have in January, which if you know anything about Canadian weather in December, January, February, March, we are in winter. So in stores, definitely in December, December, January, you are not seeing summer stuff. So I need to think in advance to a future me that will need cute stuff for that trip. I'm hoping the pieces I got today are gonna be wins, but I feel like whenever I'm doing online shopping, I always fully expect something to have to be returned because that just is the reality of, of trying on clothes. If I don't love, love, love it, I won't keep it. And um, I feel like that's been a really good rule for me in the last couple of years to ensure that I'm only having things in my wardrobe that I feel truly excited to wear because especially in the spring summer it's hot outside it's uncomfortable but also like showing off more skin whether it's your arms or your legs you just want to feel really secure and good in those outfits so if I don't feel that thrill that excitement to wear something I know that's a sign that maybe it isn't the the piece for me even if it might be objectively a nice outfit if I don't feel like my best self in it then it needs to be put back. It needs to go away. Ugh. So let's try these on. I like how this combo looks on my back. I just think the front is way too much. Looks like I put a tablecloth on me. I like it even less with the midriff going. Ooh. 
Woof, we're returning that so quickly. I'm trying to think if I like the top without the skirt. While I was getting undressed, I realized the reason this top isn't working for me is it reminds me of pool floaties. Like I'm being thrust into the deep end, but so I don't drown. These puffers are gonna save the day. But these shorts, I don't think on their own are anything special to me. Actually, I think last year I tried on a similar short and compared them to a Boy Scout short. But online, I saw the model styling this with the black belt and it looked super chic. See, I think with the belt, it it makes it. Picturing a high neck sleeveless black top would be really cute. Or even a black t-shirt. The color is so nice. I love this green. I also picked up a pair of Curve Love cargo shorts in my size for jeans, but I don't think these have much stretch, even though it seems like they do. There isn't much happening here and I literally can't get them up. So I'm gonna have to size up. I'm not sure if I'm gonna go up one or two sizes because I think these would be a really cute spring pant as well. It's nice to have an option other than jeans. So I think I might exchange that. I also got this beautiful sleep set. I'll try it on, but if it's a little too much for camera, you'll just have to take my word for it. You can also get matching shorts. I feel like this is nice and light for spring, summer, it gets super hot in my apartment. Yeah, that's gonna be a no for showing that on camera. The back is very nice though. my pizza is in the oven i decided to prep all of the lettuce that i bought for groceries this week this is how i'm going to ensure that i actually eat the produce that i bought especially when it comes to lettuce it's so i feel like tedious to prepare because you have to pick through the gross stuff you have to wash the lettuce you have to break it apart i'm sure i'll establish an easier system eventually but right now i'm a bit slow at it so i've cleaned broken up and now i'm going to spin this right here is the magic while my lettuce is spinning, it's funny because I was looking back at that footage of me trying on um, the Abercrombie stuff earlier today. And when I was looking back at the footage, the two-piece set, the black or the blue and white set, wasn't as bad as I had pictured it when I was trying it on and looking in the mirror and looking in the viewfinder, but it still wasn't a piece, uh, an outfit that made me feel good. And that alone is reason to take something back because even, even if it looks fine, it should look great and it should look great in your opinion on you. I think that shift in thinking when it comes to clothing has been so important to ensuring that I have a closet of things I actually enjoy. Don't get me wrong, I don't think my closet's quite there yet. I've been trying to, over the last couple of years, I guess, get into that habit of saying, is this something that I feel amazing in? And if the answer is no, then it's a return. It's a not bringing home kind of vibe, even if there's a sale, even if it's a deal. I got all of those pieces, by the way, I don't think I mentioned it on sale. Even though Though, like almost all of them are going back except those green shorts I'm not gonna feel too disappointed because a it's early in the season so there's plenty of opportunity to find stuff and B I do love a lot of stuff from Abercrombie so you know there's just sometimes like hits and misses editing Caitlin here I'm popping in just because there's a point that I wanted to make that I didn't really get to in this clip which is I was feeling a little blue after trying on those clothes because I was really excited about those pieces and when things don't like look the way that you think they're gonna look or turn out the way you imagine them to turn out it can be really disappointing when those expectations aren't met and with clothing specifically I know for me personally like it's been so tempting in the past to look at myself as like what's the problem why am I not fitting into these clothes but as we know clothes are meant to fit us we are not meant to fit clothes. AKA, I'm not gonna take it too personally that these things didn't work out because I have a unique body, everyone has unique bodies, and it's difficult to expect that everything's gonna be a slam dunk. And actually, often I think one of the hard parts about trying on clothes is that we spend so little time in the clothing before we take it off. You know, if you're in a change room with pieces that you are picking up at a store, you might wear a garment for like 30 seconds and realize right away eh, it's not right or a couple minutes, but it's not a long amount of time that we're spending looking at the piece. And actually, when I look back at footage of me trying on clothes, I can almost more critically look at the garment itself as why it might or might not be working for me so that I can look for those things when I'm shopping online or IRL in the future, as opposed to just immediately thinking that 
I am the issue. That extra time to analyze the garment a little bit more objectively rather than I think the more emotional instinctual part that we listen to when we're just quickly trying on clothes, I think has been also a very informative way to not get so down if something doesn't work out. Anyways, back to video Caitlin. That is my little chit chat today. Buy clothes that you feel amazing in, that make you feel powerful and confident and the best version of yourself, whatever that means to you. Meeting adjourned. That was like my gavel moment. <laughs> spin, baby, spin. See how the water's all out here and it's just getting so much moisture out of here, which is important for I find preserving the lettuce or spinach or whatever it is that you're planning to use. I want to get this as water free as possible. Possible. Happy birthday to you. Let me see your cake. Oh, what is oh, what that? Is that? Yeah. I don't know. Is that a slice or a full cake? A, a slice. I felt left out. Everyone's having cake. I'm not getting cake. In the last few years, I just find myself rarely getting super, super excited about new makeup products. I feel like for the most part, I have found products that work for me and I pretty much do the same look every day with the exception of some more special occasions where I glam up a bit more, but I've got staples that I like and I seldomly feel compelled to like stray away from them. A perfect example is eyeshadow. I like a neutral eyeshadow palette. So at a certain point, there's only so many neutral eyeshadow palettes that you really need. And the thought of buying an eyeshadow palette that's a little out there doesn't seem as practical to me because I'm probably not gonna get as much use out of it. All this to say, I got swindled by the internet because of all the talk of Rare Beauty soft pinch tinted lip oil and I ended up picking one up in the color Serenity. I tried it briefly yesterday, but I want to actually wear it fully today. I need to use my phone as a mirror here. It's kind of got a cooling feeling to it. And I didn't realize this, but apparently it also stains it. Like it, it leaves a stain on your lip once the oilness goes away. I thought it'd feel like a lip gloss and it kind of looks like it'd be like a lip gloss, but it's not sticky. I've never tried a lip oil before, so this is my first adventure into that world and I'm quite enjoying it because although I do love a lip gloss moment when it gets really sticky it's very hard I feel like to to wear because hair keeps getting on it and I feel like it builds like this congealingness sometimes <laughs> which sounds gross but like it just gets tacky I'll have this one linked below but I know everyone has been chit-chatting about this thing but I gotta say I'm liking it Hello. Happy birthday! It's your day of birth. It's your day of birth. Goodbye, Charlie. No, don't say it like that. Say another year. Woohoo! Oh, what's up? What's up? Oh, what's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> what's up? What's up? With my dinner tonight, I'm making use of that lettuce that I prepped earlier, and I'm gonna make one of my go-to salads at the moment. It is so, so good, and the matching ingredient is this guy right here. First up is the cucumber. Cherry tomatoes. And then the apple. An apple is I wouldn't feel like a conventional salad ingredient. If I had some strawberry too, I'd add that as well. But even just the apple alone adds this beautiful sweetness that is so, so yummy. I don't recommend going too small with these apple chunks because you want your fork to be able to easily stab at them. Oops. Now I have my veggies and my apple, adding my lettuce. I'm just mixing in this dressing that's made up of olive oil, balsamic, salt, pepper. Oh, and Dijon. Forgot the Dijon. You could absolutely add some feta to this as well. It is so good. I'm gonna try and get a bite of everything. Can I do it? I don't know why the apple is so game changing in this, but it is. <laughs> been putting off a task for way too long and you realize when you film it that it only took you two minutes and 30 seconds to actually do it that's what's happening right now wow i forgot how bright these get they've been kind of uh sad looking flameless candles for a while because they have been out of batteries 
I'm actually ashamed of how little time that took. And be certain it doesn't blow back on the president is to make sure it's not just a new development in my TV watching is the fact that I have, for the first time ever, started watching Scandal, which for people who love Scandal and have loved it for a very long time, I'm sure sounds shocking. I have never seen one episode of Scandal before, but a few clips appeared on my TikTok for you page and it got me kind of curious about it. So one night, I think this is a couple weeks ago now, I just played the first couple episodes and I was immediately hooked and now I'm on season three. It kind of blows my mind that TV shows used to be 20, 20, 22 episodes long a season. Like there's so many shows that I know were running around the scandal time. They were just lengthy and these days it's so rare for a season to go over eight episodes. It's just wild how different TV was not that long ago. The times of cable TV series was a whole other beast than the new streaming series. Although I am loving it, I'm really into it. I think there's so many great characters and Olivia Pope is such an interesting female character. It's also a little bit of a, a, a beast of a show to start tackling because I don't wanna, I don't wanna do any digging online because I'm only on season three and I feel like there's a lot of potential spoilers I can come across, but I wanna hear people's thoughts on the show, but I also need to like get through the show, but it is a very long show to get through. Like I'm gonna be doing this for a bit. <laughs> I can only compare it to the experience as a reader when you pick up a 300 page book, which is like the average, I would say, fiction book versus a seven, 800 page book. There's just something a little bit intimidating when we're dealing with this amount of content. Actually, speaking of 700, 800 page books, the other day I finally finished Chain of Thorns by Cassandra Clare. This is the third and final installment in the Last Hour trilogy. I've mentioned it before when it comes to Cassandra Clare. She's one of those authors I've been reading since I was in sixth grade and I'm 26 now so do the math like I've read all of these books on the back here every single one of them and because they came out at such different times I've read them at such different phases of my life I read the first ever Shadowhunter book City of Bones as my first post Twilight read <laughs> because Twilight is the series that got me into reading I binged them and I think I reread them two or three times before I finally said, okay, I should try and find another book that captures my interest because if if one series managed to catch my eye, there's potentially others out there. And I immediately read City of Bones and got so invested in it. And that's, I, I think like I always say, Twilight is what started me as a reader and City of Bones is what kind of solidified me as a reader. It was the proof of concept, I guess you could say. It was my ah, this, this is a thing that I do enjoy. Okay, let's continue. I also got to work with Simon Teen on promoting this book but back in the summer and when it initially released. So it, it was special too to do that campaign because I know that's something that a younger me would have found absolutely mind-blowing. It's just funny how books can sometimes be special because of the contents within them and sometimes they're special because of what they've done for you. And when I think about the Shadowhunter world, I just have so much gratitude and a feeling of home. Because whenever I go back into these books, it feels like I'm returning and tapping into that younger version of myself as cheesy as that might sound, but it's true. But I will say, as someone who has been reading off of a Kindle for a lot recently, it is a different experience to get back into the physical book. It's both very satisfying because there's something special about holding and reading a physical book, but also arguably you have to do a little bit more gymnastics when getting into reading positions because uh, the weight distribution as you start getting into the book flip-flops and it changes the way that you hold the book. It is the best experience when we're in a middle of the road kind of situation. So part of me is a little bit happy that I get a little bit of a break. My arms don't have to do so much holding, but I cannot ever read a Shadowhunter book in non-physical form. It always has to be in uh, in physical. And on that note, I must continue Scandal. I'm also watching Ted Lasso. I'm also watching Mandalorian now. I'm watching Succession. There's a lot of good TV happening right now. Between that and Scandal and big books and podcasts and and YouTube videos. There's too much content, not enough time. I want to be a consumer, but I also have to actually live a life, <laughs> you know? On that note, I'm gonna go watch all these characters be stupid and make very questionable decisions. All of them are a little bit like, mm, I'm not sure if that's ethical, but okay. <laughs> not just Fitz chasing you out of town, but all of you.